see the cherries grow by the dry card runner where I plucked them long ago one day when I was sober oh lay me down to the judgment crack by the wild card runner the blankets swag upon my back and pillow me drunk or sober. Look and listen. A star falls from the roof of the sky. A wind is beginning in the thick bush of the night. It blows in Abel's town, quiet as a miner's ghost, sifting the shingle dust of the street for fool's gold. It dances like a high-heeled whiskey Jane on the gapped floor of a shanty, puffing and smiling in whalebone and a feathered hat while the hot dead whistle for more. And the Chinamen, in exile there, lying down light and lank under a clay quilt, hear it ruffle above them like the swaggering bandit waves between them and China. Under the sailing moon, Abel's town is full of the empty dead. But no blood runs, except in the willow veins and the cold water race that sighs all night like a naked girl under the old moon's eye. What did you hear then? The moor pork with blood on its claw, hooting? A rabbit screeching with blood on its fur? No, stoat and owl run to their holes. The dead hide under God's hand. I caught you the widow of forty-night by the dry card runner. Who is singing on the night road when only the scared owls can hear him? But I was never sober. It is Jack Winter, rabbiter, swagman, and station Never rouseabout. A 68 convictions for Even being happy in a public place. A jailed when under the dog act, he must wear a terrier's collar till the day death takes it off. Twin brother to the Ephesian sleepers, he has forgotten the world of man-hours and ordered mischief, wishes, agonies, hot love and cold pillows, plaster gnomes and paper doilies, for a lifelong dream in which he is winter walking Adam, and the green, gay, hole and corner, rabbit-footed, duck-blooded, river-voiced, bush-thighed and mountain-breasted earth, his care and his sole kingdom. Bread, lean mutton, tea and tobacco snooze in his swag with a bottle of Brandovino, a black billy in newspaper, a cure for hemorrhoids, and an astrological work called the secrets of the pyramids. His heart plods in his breast as he climbs the winding, windy, endless road. Old Jonah, alone and alive in the whale's belly night. My head 
I've seen the cherries glow by the wild card runner where I plucked them long ago one day when I was sober Are you there, Jack? Where else would I be, dear? in a boat coffin. He pocket the brass hens and sell them to get a nip to keep the frost out. They're all men, sweetheart. Eustace being angry. More than gooseberry fool. More than a, a Christmas candle. Oh, more than button and gravy. More than tomorrow. More than a potato nugget. More than a church. Full of windows. I love you better than John Winter. Do you want me more than heaven? I don't know. Behind the ice hedge of a moustache, flesh mouth and glass mouth meet snugly, swapping spits in the dark. And in the great grave of the sky, a cloud walks like a spider over the face of the moon. Abel's town goes down like a raft in the long Pacific seas of the night. Old Jack is a drowned man walking, his blood heavy with lost sea gardens, fable of coin and shell, and the weedy seagirl voices beckoning him to the blind rock of sleep. To the right runs a one-time bullet track. To the left, the road sprawls into a riverbed and bellows for help on the greasy stones. And beyond smolder the twice-dead ruins of the Drover's Rest, a roadside shanty pub some time ago vacated by its late owner, Mr. Charles Bird, known to the dead drovers as Webfoot Charlie 
for his duck swaddle and his grip on a gold half sovereign. At the verge of the inner room, under an elder bush where a piece of roof still stops the sky from looking in, Jack Winter unrolls his swag. The smiling dead host welcomes him. He stretches out and falls like a spinning stone into the dooms and dreams and fiery Sabbath of the 80 years undead. The wind rises, savaging stone and star as if to blow the night away. And the guilt of man's dominion from the God-made earth. But listen. Look. The past is turning its drowned face towards us. The clay-crumbed floor is smooth and hard again. By the smoke-black wall stands a clock ticking the dead time away. Air, earth and water are made again in the shape of man-flesh. A true ghost is knocking at the horn gates of a dream. Out and out! For God's sake! Bring out a light, Charlie. Soul in the dark needs help. It's no time for man no big to be walking. He's here, he's here. The wall's not made of iron. He's a mucky with sweat. Shut your mouth, Larry. What's your name? It's late to be knocking at honest men's houses. Here from the Dunstan. There's many queer folk abroad. I'm Will Trevelyan, son of Ned Trevelyan, and a better man never stepped in two shoes. And you're a webfoot Charlie. They say it's gonna day old calf and sell its blood for a pudding. Wish no. In the Lord's sight, no man is justified. Did I be so quick? Come on, Ben, in now. You're a good lad. For all of that. Trevelyan. That's uh, Cornish. Yes. Is it long you been at the digging? Three months by Easter. That's too long for me. Bags of mouldy flour weighed out for gold dust. Whiskey. And a rusty pan. A beard full of lice. Rain coming through the canvas. Wet. 
and dry. The grey rock and the wind and the tussock. There's a thousand brutes in Moleskin digging for the yellow dirt. Only brutes don't eat each other. That's the Dunstan. I led. But the Lord preserves the simple. So, you've come away a wee bit poorer. But no harm done. Poorer? I've come out of it with a thousand pounds in gold dust and nuggets. It's all in the saddlebags out by the creek there. The hack's stone dead. He broke his leg at the ford among the boulders and drowned the damn slimy creek. Game brute he was, kinder than a man. I woke up with my head out of the water, so I untied the girth and pulled the saddle off him. Still there, lying where I left it. Then I saw the lights and came this way. Time enough to get the gold in the morning. Come, in by the fire. You'll be wet from the creek still. You've heard the bad tale of me, lad. Charlie Bird's like a right nut. With spikes outside and a good heart underneath. Well, I'm glad enough of company and a wicked night. It was preaching Lowry let you in. He's a bit touched. Mad when the worm bites, but no fool either. He knows a florin from a crown. And uh, over in the corner, that's the Dane. Nobody's ever heard his right name. A devil when he's drunk. He was a captain before he killed a man. He can play the fiddle to beat all comers. And <coughs> this is Ballarat Jack. Glad to meet you, son. She's a tough little island. You'll not be seeing my daughter, Jenny. She's asleep in her bed above. A young maid shouldn't hear what men say over a glass. <coughs> mm, she's a flower. And her mother dead these five years. And father and mother to her now. Must be lonely for a child in these parts. Oh, she's not a child, quite. <clears throat> oh, we're each other's company. She's busy about the household and they're singing <coughs> like a bird. <laughs> I could sing myself when I had a voice. But uh, sit down, lad. Uh, go on. I'm forgetting your comfort. You'll have a glass of aqua vitae. I'd rather a plate of dry beef and onions. You'll have that too. And hot water to wash in. That's a bruise. Kind Charlie touches the Cornishman's face where the skin is broken. Then walks on sly web feet from table to kitchen. Unknown to him, in the thickness that is wall and will be air, 
Jack Winter groans and rolls from the nightmare padding feet. His empty glass bride clatters on a stone. The dead Cornishman cannot hear it. He knows only what his eyes and fingers tell him. But the dead mad preacher sees, beyond time, Jack Winter lying under the elder tree, its moondark clusters heavy with sleep. He hears the clenching shudder of root in earth. He sees time past and time to be, and the heart of man a clay image melting on the palm of God's hand. He sees his own coffin. The drunk Dane wakens on his fireside bench. He is tattooed with trees like the gliding Amazon. From one tree, a serpent hangs head downward to his navel. He draws from under his moleskin jacket the only voice he owns, the narrow-waisted singing fiddle And to that strumming, Ballarat Jake tells this sentimental, true, dead love to the listening Sabbath dark. There was never one to match her lovely Mary Gray in her flower. Woman's nature, death himself was loath to snatch her from the world away. Bright as a berry, her eyes were shining, my dear Mary Gray. When the harvest moon was waning, oh, her breasts were the land of Canaan under a mound of hay. She told me that she loved me dearly, charming Mary Gray. Her words of love they did with a deep wound, my heart was bleeding on her marriage day.
It's a sad old song. I could do as well myself if the frog in my throat had left me. I... <coughs> Did she leave you at the altar, Jack? <laughs> they do say a woman's not to be trusted. My own wife was very strange to me. Uh, very strange. God rest her where she should be. She loved a Rakovita better than a broom. A great ugly slummikin skirt. She had to break the wall down to carry her out. The door was too narrow for her proud carrion. Ah, oh, man. She was your own wife. Hold your tongue, Lowry. You're an old croaking magpie. Oh, now, lad, be easy. There's no bad blood between friends, eh? And Charlie Bird always speaks his mind. She was a kind old bag, sure enough, and I was sorry to see her go. <laughs> you a secret, lad. I'm not the man I used to be. I could fork to the top of the stack once. I all day. And toss a hundred weight of wheat. But the cold catches me now. It's dear by the heart. Old bones are sad bones. But you mustn't mind an old man's way. You're young yet. There's many a day to live. And a rich man, too. <laughs> yeah, the blood's bright in your face. If I had a son, he'd be about your age this day. Oh, drink it down, lad. It's better than bog water. Oh, I might even sing a song myself. Just a funny wee shanty I heard when I was a boy at sea. When I was a strolling in Liverpool town, I met a young maid with her hair hanging down. When I asked her the reason for why she did weep, she answered, my husband has gone with a fleet. <laughs> Derry down, 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 Derry down. He's young and he's handsome, he worshipped my charms, and often he cuddled me close in his arms. We love like two mice in a hole in a cheese, but now he's tossing upon the wild seas. Derry down, 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 derry down. Can a pretty young maid live long without friends? Oh, I'll be your husband to make you amends. But no, she replied, I could never do that, for I still must be true to me wandering Jack. Derry down, 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 Derry down. When a maid is a weeping, no gorgon am I, so I offered me sleeve and her tears were soon dry. At night I lay rough as a bear in her arms, and in place of her sailor I tasted her charms. Derry down, 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 Derry down. But from her warm pillow I rose with the day, and I pulled on my boots. Though she begged me to stay, I left that young maid with her hair hanging down, and I sailed with the tide out of Liverpool town. 
Derry down. Down, down. <laughs> ah, that's a fine song indeed, Mr. Burr. It reminds me. Ah, oh, now that's another tale. Uh, let's have a jig. Ah, no, it's not a tale for the preacher's ears. He's no preacher. With a daft old Scots billy goat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, here's the true tale. There's a billy goat in this one, too. <laughs> well, I was mining a claim south of Ballarat in the 60s. There's three of us in it together. Myself and the, the Dane here, and, and a sailor like the one in the song. <laughs> a tyke of a man. Roaring wee Scotsman with a, a rum bottle nose and a fist like a hammer. And next to his bottle, he loved what he called the lasses. Black, white, brown and yellow. He'd been through them all like, like a boy through a field of hay. Hated the kirk. He used to say that if a parson came within smelling distance of him on his last day, he'd brain him. The boys with an empty bottle. For the mountain dew is knee cheap, and a parson's head is gay thick. <laughs> Those were his words. <laughs> he wouldn't deny there might be a god. But the devil, no, no, it was a tale to frighten beings with. Well, myself and the Dane had put a drive into the hill. We timbered it up safe and sound. The wee Scotsman, Jimmy Lawson he called himself, though I guess he'd another name at home, it, been on the spree for a week and he'd never touched a shovel. He'd work like a bullock one day and be dead drunk the next. <laughs> well, he comes up cocky as a fantail when the work's finished. <laughs> Well, yeah, you've done a, a great job here. But I hope you've made it safe. I think I'll just go down and try her. You go right on down. Now, there was a goat tied up outside the tent. An old stinking billy with a beard like Satan. He had little enough to feed on except the salt bush and whatever we gave him of our own tucker, but the Dane wouldn't have him killed. Up to the mouth of the drive while the Scotsman was down at the bottom. <laughs> There's a place here that needs a slab of timber. Here's a man with the timber. <laughs> and then he sees this billy goat coming, coughing and grunting, his horns and beard and eyes like coals in the dark. He takes one look, and down he drops on his knees. Hey, he calls out with a voice to crack the rock. Endil, Bolly Deal, dinner medal with your in Jimmy Lawson. <laughs> There's a moral in that tale, <coughs> if you'd only look to it. In the light. A man may forget the deal, but in the dark by his own cell, he'll remember soon enough.
Ch uh, bring us another bottle, Charlie. Drier than a kill. Let him be. He's taken by a call of nature. I let him be. Sweet man, sober, but oh, he's a tiger when he's roused. Don't lay a hand on him. He might slip on the tussock and break his neck. I'll go and see him back to the door. Never fear. The devil looks after drunks and fools. If he breaks his neck bone, that's his own damned folly. No, he'll lie down and wake up when the frost begins to burn. I'll leave the door unlatched for him. But uh, give us a song, lad, before we sleep. It's near midnight, and our bones are soon weary. I'll warrant you can sing the best of any. Webfoot Charlie eyes the Cornish miner with a look that could be love. His lips are wet in the wide, moony face. He is thinking of gold. Like ripe walnuts in the hand. And a young calf croaking blood through the new mouth made by a knife. I'll sing you one my mother used to sing. It's a quaint old song, but it'll give us sweet thoughts for the pillow. Oh, dear light on yonder hill, o'er the sheepfold shining still, from my true love's window sill, tell her I am waking. Brown her face and neat her hair, sweet her breath as harvest air, light her foot upon the stair at the junket making. Tell her what I dare not tell, lamp upon her window sill. Tell her that I love her well, and my heart is breaking. Gladly would I take her hand, gladly at the altar stand, on her finger place the band. Single life forsaking. Back to your bed, lass. It's no time for you to be stirring. I heard the singing, Father. That was Mr. Trevelyan. He will stay the night. He's just come down from the Dunstan. I liked your song, sir. If it please do, there's nothing better I could ask. Oh, now don't go soft soaping the lass. She's a swag of foolish thoughts in her head already. Go to your bed, Jenny. He clucks and shoes her up the stair to her high, hayloft bed, then turns down the wick of the kerosene lamp that hops like a flea in its tall glass chimney.
The preacher says no to the dark that creeps in beside him like a little negress with bulrush thighs and breasts of black ivory. He says no and turns instead to the Africa of his dreams, where he sees forever under closed lids a shark-toothed devil dancing and a wooden judging god. Ballarat Jake, at the other side of the flames, dressed for the grave in a calico shirt, lies down like a pharaoh in a gold sarcophagus. A swarm of bees settles in his kingly, dead flesh under the black bandages, and he does not cry out as their honey soaks through his limbs. An hour passes, told by the wormy tick-tock of the mankind measuring clock. The preacher is dreaming of... Robert Burns. Ladies curls and a brown cravat. Walking with him beside a drumming pebbled mill stream and talking theology. <laughs> Ballarat Jake is hugging with ghostly arms. Bed of green dollar notes, a rustling frisco singing girl with a ribbon round her neck and nothing on at all. <laughs> The Danish sailor, flat on his back under the moon's lantern, snores like a breaker and dreams of... And blubber Charlie, sweating and wakeful in the web-footed dark, lovingly unbuckles beside the admonishing stream the black leather saddlebags. He ferrets in their throats for the clotted blood of gold. High in the blinkered house, the young Cornishman looks at the face of the dead, living girl who drowses now in the nook of his arm. He smells the yeast of woman flesh that rises from her like the sweet smell of a byre. He hears beyond the window the long voice of water praising the years away. The mattress of manuka twigs on which they lie is a raft afloat on a milk sea of moonshine.
And now you leave me. And never come back. No, love. I'll come with a horse and gig. Take you away with me to England. We'll be married in the church at Tintagel. It's like a haystack with a wooden cross on top of it. There'll be fiddles, rough cider, and inside, boys with white linen singing, and maids with flowers. I'm no maid. No. You're a wife. We'll build a house of our own, a mile from the sea. Big orchard behind it. Apples, pears, thousands. Black currant, red currant, and gooseberry and sugar plum. There'll be a walnut tree for the children to climb on, and a roof made of sea slates. We'll write our name on every one of them. My father won't let me go. You'll come round yet. He's a rough old dog. But the money will take his fancy. He'd like to see you marry money. I'm afraid of him. He's been strange ever since Mother died. I lock my door because of him. He stands outside in the dark. I can hear him. Breathe. All the more reason to come with me, love. He's not well, poor man. He told me as much tonight. I heard him go out about an hour ago. Be out looking for the sailor. He's not as hard-hearted as he'd like a man to believe. Don't go, Will. We'll have many a night, love. One day you'll be tired of my silly talk. Your father won't take kindly to me as a new member of the family if he finds me here with you. Take care. But the Cornishman does not look behind him as he closes the attic door. He comes down the stairs like a whiskered tomcat, light on the balls of his bare feet. He looks out the shanty door at boulders like seals in moonlight. In his heart, an unaccustomed love is wrestling with the stupid pride of the fortunate seducer. He does not hear the steps behind him, faint on the dry tussock. From his bones, the harvest rises. But girl of rock, sea girl, and girl of flesh coming with garlands, mourn for the ram's head bull-tasseled youth, lovely under the hour's knife. Heavy with blood, the moon is weeping. 
and stained with dark blood, the stream snores time away in its shingle bed. The bushed owl hoots with blood on its claw. The rabbit screams as the kniving stoat weaves nearer. There's your blood, Puddin, my young bantam. There's murder done. The poor young man. What's that you say? There's a devil abroad tonight. The young man's dead. His throat's cut from ear to ear. And that dumb sailor lying pools beside him. Oh, bloody with a razor in his hand. There's blood on you too, Charlie. I tried to lift him. I never saw the Dane use a razor. What do you mean, Jake? Just that it's a... Queer business. They are not in trouble, as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasseth them a boot like a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. You mad as a mug and lowry. Ah. Man's a wee mouse in a big barn. There's room enough for us all when the end comes. The long dark rides over them. The single night returns, wrapping the wounded stones in swaddling bands. Jack Winter sleeps long and alone in the shroud of night. Crickets were like musical clocks on branch and wall. From the cool road, dusty with sunlight, two hikers climb to the door of the drover's rest. They are scrubbed and smooth and clean and hairless, hygienic as washing boards. Oh, Hilda, isn't it quaint? Who could live in a house like this? 
must be very old. No one could live in it now. Look, someone asleep by the fireplace. That's a drunk swagger. Goodness, how he smells. There's one thing I can't bear. It's the smell of a drunk man. He's old enough to know better, too. But John Winter does not hear his early morning visitors. Crickets and girls' tongues ticking at the double this fine, bright morning do not reach his deaf ear. The single dream is broken, and his name is no longer Winter. The seas of the last grief have gone over him. He is locked in the cupboard of God's care. He is young Jack now, though his bones lie old and empty. The sun dances among his ruins. Oh, lay my bones till the judgment crack by the wild Cardrona, a blanket swag upon my back. Oh, pillow me drunk or sober. I courted a widow of 49 by the dry Cardrona. She owned a stable and a she light mine. But I was never sober. All rivers run to the rimless grave, even the wild Cardona. And never one will look my way when I am bone cold sober. I have seen the cherries grow by the wild Cardrona, and the black cherry bent my way one day when I was sober. <laughs> <laughs> 